We're going to start this puppy up. Clear? Prop? And welcome back to Tip of the Week. This week, we're in Cedar Rapids, Iowa at Clint's Hangar at the big airport. Which airport is this? The Cedar Rapids Airport. And we're doing this film in between the large 737s coming in and out. Believe it or not, regular home builders can keep airplanes out here. Wonderful place. Well, this week is another edition of what's inside of that. And this week, we all recognize one of these, a lot of us use it, it's a facet fuel pump. And people tell me it's solid state. We're gonna find out exactly what's inside of this thing and just see how solid of a state it is. So let's go to the bench and with Clint's help, we're going to see what's inside of this and hopefully we can put this back together when we're done. Why are we taking this fuel pump apart? This is a very popular line of fuel pumps used in experimental aviation known as the facet cube. Used primarily in carbureted aircraft engines, they are often a first choice for the likes of vans, aircraft kits, as well as many others. While not intended for aircraft use, they are found in huge numbers in the automotive and industrial sectors. With a history of reliability, they are available in a wide variety of fuel pressure ranges as well as hose connection options. Disassembling the pump is Clint. He's our certified technician. And although he operates quickly, I have sped up the video in order to compress time a little bit. Don't want to take too much time away from building. So we begin by prying back some of the tabs and the metal casing to get inside so we can see just how this thing works. The more we know about how it works, the better we will feel about how it is performing and exactly how it gets fuel up to our engine. Wow. <laughs> it's something. Sheet metal is a little tougher than you think it might be too. You haven't let the smoke out. Not yet. I guess that's some sort of soundproofing. Mm -hmm. Something. There's the coil. So that's a good reason not to put that directly next to my uh, compass uh, <laughs> detector. <laughs> yep. The end popped off and a spring popped out of a little cylinder. Let's see here. I don't know if there's anything really interesting under here, but we're going to try to get it anyway. Well, that, sir is the solid in your solid state. That's a switching fed of some kind. So. Okay. That's and they were using that as a heat sink. That's why it was riveted down to the sheet metal. Okay. 
So for those vacuum tube people out there, that's an FET, field effect transistor. And it's basically an on or off type of device then, correct? Conducts or stops conducting? Uh, for the most part, yes. Okay. I'm oversimplifying. <laughs> and then we have our... And this thing that can come out. Oh, there it is. Okay. So we're going to put him there. Our electronics. Coil of wire. He kind of wanted to come out. Actually, might have a uh, just a little bit of a crimp in that to prevent it from uh, coming out, maybe. We're going to get uh, get aggressive here, and as you can see, it's it's fairly tight tolerance there. Um, you know, there's not a lot of not a lot of wobble in that tube, so you can imagine why they recommend having a fuel filter or a screen on the input to prevent that slug from binding within that copper tube with some fine dirt in, along the edges. Yeah, yeah, because it's uh, there's not a lot of movement in that. You can see here, I'm trying to cause some wiggle and there's not a lot there so so that's uh, that's why they want a, a pre-filter on them it looks like that's right in the directions so. Excellent. hmm well now we have a smaller piece to work with anyway that's progress if we're taking something apart right Well, there's probably a burr on the end or That's something. That's true. There it is. So you got a little retaining, retaining clip in there. So we can get him out of there. Hopefully we retain the retaining clip. This should be the other, uh, other check valve. It is stuck. Little nubs on the on the molding in here. It looks like. There we go. pieces I can drop. So as this moves back, fuel will uh, probably attempt to press. Actually that, that spring will, will close that little check valve. This will come back. And all the while that's happening, fluid's being pushed out the front check valve. Okay, right. So the front check valve is open. The rear check valve is closed. When the coil is being energized, I believe. And then when the coil stops being energized, the spring is then tensioned, compressed, sorry and we'll move the slug forward which will close the output check valve and push whatever fluid was ahead of the slug out ah, right. while at the same time opening the input check valve allowing fluid to come back into the spring area it has to flow in of its own pressure of course at that point well I actually think um, you know, it's not going to pull the fuel and the vapor in this area, so there's probably a little bit of a suction here because of such a tight fit around in this 
brass tube that's moving around. That's true. It's probably going to draw, draw fuel again. in. Okay, yeah. Um, until the coil is energized again and the output check valve will open back up. The input I believe will close again and it just cycles in that fashion. really wish we could remanufacture this thing with a clear plastic tube and then energize it and watch it work. And here we have all of the parts disassembled, our cover on the top, our coil, and don't forget the fancy electronics, the part that makes it solid state that's encased in here, which turns our coil on and off in rapid fashion. 12 volts. And then our inlet over here, valve, small spring, clip, large spring, plunger, valve, retaining clip, and the tube that the plunger runs in, and our end cover. And so we have a vibrating plunger pulling the fuel, and our little valves sealing and opening as necessary to pump the fuel. So there are no moving parts, well that's not correct, but there's no connection through magnetism except the lines of force. So that's what's inside of that. Yeah. So thank you for your effort there. And what part of factory or authorized uh, makes you factory authorized? Uh, for I, I guess I owned a screwdriver and a pliers. That's what made me qualify. So. Okay, and next time your facet pump doesn't work, have you learned not to take it apart like that? Absolutely. Yeah, no, that was I'll very... I'll see if I can't get this one put back together. Yeah, there, yeah I, well, I, I, I kept the guts nearby, so... <laughs>a field of phenomenon that you need. And now if you'll pull it apart so we can see the pieces there. Yeah. There's the spring, and then the slug is inside there. For heaven's sakes, okay, that, wow. Yeah, that's what it was. Be sure to check Facet's website for all of the details on these pumps. I noticed there are several dozen different models, all with different pressure ranges, different gallons per hour flow rates. Some of them have check valves. Most of them allow the fuel to flow right through. And as Clint mentioned earlier, be sure you read the directions. For example, it is required to have a pre-filter, a filter before it hits the fuel pump to make sure parts don't clog these up. When you're done checking out their website, remember, time to get back to building. See, I, I did get this one put back together. Liar!